Hey everyone, happy Sunday. I hope that you have had a really good week. I hope I've had a good week or I'm still having a good week. Uh, I'm not going to be in the studio still for a little while, so I've recorded this one in advance, but it's another topic that I've wanted to talk to you guys about for some time. So let's start at the beginning. I would like to talk to you about the way that electric car and plug-in hybrid range is represented. You see, we've got really used to representing our range based on how far a car can go per charge. The EPA in the US does it slightly differently. It does it using a miles per gallon equivalent, and it's figured that out by looking at how far a particular car can travel on the equivalent of one gallon of gasoline because a gallon of gasoline has a particular energy density and therefore you can calculate how far an electric vehicle can travel on the energy equivalent of a gallon of gasoline. And it's done that because it felt that people would find, hmm, how do I put this? People would find MPGE easier to understand than range per charge. I don't think that's the case, but the way that we also look at range in general is is not very accurate because we rate electric vehicles on their range when they're new in a theoretical maximum best case scenario. And as our vehicles get older, as the vehicles age, the, the distance they can travel per charge starts to drop. So I'm wondering if there's a way of representing how far an electric car can travel per charge based on, how do I put this? Based on, I suppose, an average, rather than say, in ideal situations, this car can travel this far. You say, in most, in most cases, this car will travel this distance and you may end up being able to travel further. And to that end, I often wonder if automakers should rate the range of their cars based on maybe one or two years down the line. So for example, the 2011 through 2017 Nissan Leaf, or rather 2011 through uh, 2016 Nissan Leaf, instead of rating it with an EPA range based on when the car was brand new, you'd rate it based on how the car was doing after a couple of years and after the battery degradation that a lot of these Nissan Leafs seem to be suffering. And at that point, you'd go, okay, it would travel far less per charge than it would when new. The Leaf is an extreme case because it is the car that seems to suffer most from battery degradation. The Chevrolet Volt, for example, seems to suffer very little from battery degradation. Ditto with the Chevrolet Volt. Um, and according to a lot of the data I've seen, the Tesla Model S seems to have very minimal range loss over its life. Obviously, it's because it's got a big battery pack. The same is true for the Chevrolet Bolt EV. And I wonder if rather than, than shoot for the kind of the ideal best case scenarios, which often get automakers and advertising agencies into a little bit of trouble because people say, okay, I bought this car thinking I could do, uh, it's more of a problem in Europe, but I, I bought this car thinking the car could do 110 miles or 120 miles. And what the heck, when I drive it, I can only get 60 or 70. Now, your mileage may vary. And this is not a new problem to electric vehicles. It's been a problem with internal combustion engine vehicles as well. We've had lawsuits in the past about it, you know, hybrids that on paper get 50, 60 miles per gallon, in the real world are getting 30 or 40 miles per gallon. Class action lawsuits, we've seen them against Honda, we've seen them against Toyota, we've seen them against other automakers. But that doesn't do any favors to both the cause of alternative fuel vehicles, but it, or to the average consumer who at the end of the day wants to buy a car that they know is going to cost them a certain amount of money to operate or is going to be able to travel a certain distance per charge. And if they buy that car, and it can't meet that, those needs, then they might sell the car. They might tell their friends how terrible it is. They might tell their friends how, what a, excuse the language, what a crock of crap it is. And they 
then their negative experience gets gets spread around. Wouldn't it be better if automakers actually built a reserve into the cars, for example? So they design car battery packs to offer a set amount of range per charge. And as the battery de uh, degrades, the car can still offer that range because it's been designed to offer a set range after n number of years of ownership. So you don't actually see that there's extra capacity in the battery pack. You don't see that the car is actually capable of more range per charge. Or maybe you say this car is, is guaranteed to produce this range after this number of years and you, when the car is brand new, may find that the car can go further per charge. Wouldn't that be a better conversation to have than to go, okay, when the car's brand new, it will go this far. And then after three years, it will go this far. And then after 10 years, it will go this far. And then after 15 years, well, you need a new battery or you need to buy a new car because that's not uh, the kind of conversation that people want to have. Now, as I've said, it's, it's not a problem just with internal, with electric vehicles. Internal combustion engine vehicles, as they age, their fuel economy tends to go down because you'll end up with things like deposits on the fuel injectors um, or you'll end up with damage to the piston rings and the compression will start to drop. And if the compression drops, then the engine doesn't necessarily run as, as efficiently or it doesn't necessarily produce as much power and therefore it's consuming more fuel. You know, if you've got a dirty exhaust, for example, you may find that the car doesn't produce as much power. All of these situations happen with internal combustion engine vehicles as well. We just don't notice them as much because we fill up an internal combustion engine vehicle maybe once every two weeks if we're driving it, you know, 20 miles a day. And by the time it comes around to fill up our car again, the price of the gasoline has changed. And also, um, we're familiar with the idea that petrol will change in the amount of petrol you can get in your petrol tank will change based on how warm it is outside or how cold it is outside. Um, this all came to my mind because when driving to work, I very often hear an advert on the radio for the Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan. And in that advert, they have like a, you know how adverts do sometimes, they'll have this little disclaimer at the end of the ad that's spoken really quickly. And I can't remember the exact words that are spoken, but it's something along the lines of, you know, fueling time varies and range varies according to temperature and driving conditions and blah, 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 blah. And your average consumer doesn't want to know that. So instead of shooting for best case scenario, shouldn't we be shooting for middle of the road and effectively under promise and over deliver? I mean, any, any good engineer will tell you that's, that's a really sensible thing to do. It's much better for an engineer to go, this thing will take four days to fix and then turn around in three and go, by the way, I fixed it. I've solved your problem. I've, you know, engineered a new solution for you. You're good to go. Then to go, yeah, it's going to take two days. And then two days down the road go, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not finished yet. So if it's acceptable for us to do that and it's considered good practice, to under-promise and over-deliver it in the corporate world, in our work lives, sometimes perhaps even in an academic sense. Why aren't we doing it with cars? Why aren't we under-promising these cars and then over-delivering on them? Some car companies do, very few do. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Support us through Patreon as always. There's always more room for Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. I will see you soon with more content. I hope you enjoy it. More great content, I was going to say, but that would be a bit um, arrogant of me to assume that all my content is going to be great because I'm sure some of it's not. But until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend and keep evolving. <laughs>